the charismatic moment that you mentioned is, has to do with an interchange. It's these, you know, the charisma is not in the stars or on a billboard. It's addressed. And so when we are preaching, we are always uh, anticipating response, and we're leaving room for response. Um, that's why over-definitional sermons, it seems to me, um, lack effectiveness because there's no room for response. There's no, there's not enough room for me to respond, receive. But it's got to be a faithful receiving. It's there's a certain passivity about receiving that um, sometimes evangelistic sermons uh, are in the and I would say the wrong sense, don't leave any room for. Um, there's, there's a great deal of ambiguity in Scripture. Uh, language is not a very precise way of communicating. If you want to be precise, you use mathematics. You don't get to the moon by charismatic kind of stuff. You get a slide rule and a computer and you work it out. You can't do that in the pulpit. Life is not that way. Um, rocket science is that way. But being a Christian, being a faithful, being a sinner is not that way. So there's got to be room for ambiguity, which means there's room for response, um, differentiation. Uh, I've got something to do here, but it's not the main thing. It's a responsive thing, a receiving thing. Um, I had a young man in my congregation who became a Christian in a Billy Graham uh, campaign. And he came back to my congregation excited and full of zeal and, and advice for me. And uh, the first thing he started saying in response to my sermons is, Pastor, you don't tell me what to do. I come here to know what to do. You don't tell me what to do. And... Um, so he said that enough times, so I thought, well, I'll tell Bob what to do. So about every six weeks, I'd have a sermon in which I gave some specific directions what he should do. I didn't say his name, of course. And he'd come up, oh, Pastor, that was a great sermon. I just, that was wonderful. But every six weeks was enough, though, I thought. <laughs> so, um, but they weren't good sermons. I mean, they were good for Bob. But um, he was 17 years old, and life was black and white for him. Uh, when you're 30 years old, 50 years old, it's not black and white anymore. And the story, the biblical story and the human story, as they intersect, there's a room for a lot of ambiguity and working things out. Holiness is a slow, slow, slow process. And if there's not room for that in a congregation, and the sermon becomes a primary way in which that keeps its focus, then we don't, we don't grow, we don't develop, we don't mature. There's a lot of adolescent spirituality in America, and part of it is a result of bad preaching. 